So agriculture faces a number of uh, climate-related risks. Um, you have to know first that agriculture has been projected to be the, the second sector in terms of economic impact from climate change. And so the type of, uh, fact, the type of impacts people talk about uh, on agriculture is related to production first, the direct impact of climate change on agriculture. They are related to warming, to change of precipitation, to sea level rise, to uh, other types of events related to water and to extreme weather events. These are the direct production impacts. There are also indirect impact because when you have a drought, for instance, you will pump more groundwater from the ground, and then that means the next drought, you might have less groundwater, so that's sort of an indirect effect. You might have effect because your country is suffering for production, but the other countries that you compete with on trade international markets is not affected the same way, and so you might lose in competitiveness. That's an indirect impact as well. And then you have much broader impact on food security. People can, you know, can survive because the, the, the production is, is, is deciphered. You have impacts on tensions. You might have migration. You might have, uh, you know, buying lands. People, countries are buying lands in other countries because they can't have the water, for instance. So there are a lot of different impacts that are indirect. So policymakers, um, you know, they have to be part of the solution to those, uh, to respond to those risks in agriculture. However, they are not the only one that have a role to play. So uh, in OECD, we have studied what could be the role of public policies to respond to the climate change adaptation challenge in agriculture. How do you respond to those risks? And, and we had a lot of discussion around the table. All the countries that are part of our organization, they have different views. But overall, there are some core activities that Basically, all the member countries agree that would be core in terms of adaptation to climate change. These are, you know, providing the right information, capacity building, if you want to call it that way, infrastructure, agricultural research and development, and providing for funding when there is not funding for, for activities that could go in this direction. Now, that's the first step. The second step that they have to take into consideration, and that's what we also say, is that some of the current policies may not help in the future. So some of the current policy on agriculture, they support activities like, you know, planting some crops that are really water intensive and that will be difficult to continue planting when there is going to be droughts. You know, things, things of that nature, supporting farmers with subsidies, supporting uh, in some countries electricity subsidies for groundwater pumping and, and the groundwater goes down and then you can't use it in the future. So there are some uh, problems of uh, inconsistency of policies with the, the climate change risks. So you have to remove those distortion as much as possible and then support the market uh, integration. The third part is, the, is, the, is working on risk management. There are uh, different layers of risk and we think that governments should only respond to some type of risk. You can have normal risks. So you're in a farmer, you have a season that is not good, then you're, you should be able to adapt on yourself what you're going to do this year. You have an intermediate category of risk, which is what we call marketable. That means you could probably, if there are a market for insurance, you could insure yourself against those risks. And there is a way to do that that is not too expensive in many cases when there is a market and you can go in that direction. And then there's the third one, which is catastrophic risk. And these are things that you can't really foresee that are too extreme and therefore there is real role for public policies. So within this extreme risk, we have done some work on uh, management of droughts and floods, for instance. There are a number of measures you can think of. I'll just pinpoint a few that I think are important. The long-run management of, of those crises, those droughts and floods, you have to think about, for instance, uh, I'll take an example on water again, uh, water allocation has to be set up so that you know, farmers know what the quota, the quantity of, of water you can apply reflects the scarcity in a country that has some episodes of scarcity or droughts over time. Um, you have to look at you know, the water allocation system so that it reflects, there is a signal for the farmers to know that you, know, you can't use as much this year because there's less water. These are long-term measures before even a drought happens. Then you have around the event, you know, before, just before prevention, you have the, the, the management of the crisis and you have the ex post. And each of those have different types of measures you can think of. You, you can think about monitoring better for the farmers, that's before it happens. You can think about uh, extreme circumstances where, where you get some different measures for, such as restricting uh, the, the water that is available to farmers when there is an extreme droughts and they know it's happening so they have the signal and you can have also after the crisis do you need a compensation measure maybe in some case not etc and so you have to layer all those different measures. 
Farmers do face a number of uh, barriers to, to the adoption of climate-friendly practices. Uh, they might not be you know, aware of the problems, they might not be aware of the solutions, so information are some of the issues. You might also have uh, issues related to um, the framework in which they operate. They might have signals that tell them not to adapt, not to change their behavior. That's one thing that is important. So if, if you are encouraged to plant some crops that are not good when there is a warming up, and, and you, for instance, subsidize, your insurance is subsidized by government that tells you, you know, if you lose your crop this year, then you still will get the compensation, then why wouldn't you stop to have this high value crop that, um, you know, that, that may not resist the warming that's gonna happen. So all those different things, so policies, there might be market distortions, there might be information and behavior aspects that can be barriers to uh, those, those practices. Other actors beyond farmers and governments also have a role to play. We see that there is more and more development by uh, agro-food companies. They are interested in seeing that if they want to continue purchase some agriculture products from a region, but the region is not able to produce in the future, then they are going to have a risk for their own companies and they'll have to either move or find other suppliers. And so they are more and more involved in the system. We'll see it at least in the framework of water stewardship. Uh, where you have some companies, uh, big multinational agro-food companies that think for their own reputation but also for their profit. They want to invest on farmers so that they change their practices and, and, uh, the, and the basin is better managed. And, uh, and so it's, it's happening with NGOs as well. Companies work with NGOs and try to understand what's the problem, where to solve it and how can they be more proactive. And I think that there's more room in the future for those actors to come in. So to conclude, there are, there are multiple risks uh, associated with climate change in agriculture. Governments have a role to play to support farmers to respond to some of those risks, uh, in particular where the risks are the most extreme, uh, I would say in terms of uh, catastrophic events in particular, and also in areas, and that, that's something also to think about, that all areas will not be impacted the same way. So areas around water risk hotspots could also be a focus of intervention. At the same time, Governments should also remove uh, those, those policies that, that are not aligned with these climate change adaptation goals, those that actually uh, encourage farmers to go into uh, practices that are not sustainable uh, in, a, in a world with climate change.